If it's too late to worry and you're too blue to cry, then get ready for Dr. Lori Roth. She's a Ph.D., black belt, host, singer, songwriter, mom, gun owner, survivor, and red-blooded American through and through. From 3,000 feet up in the mountains of Washington, it's the Annie Oakley of the airwaves. Ready or not, here she comes, Dr. Lori Roth. Welcome to this hour of the Unsolved Crime segment, and Merry Christmas to you all again. Uh, There is hope in America, folks, and there's hope for people that have been victims of horrible, frightening, and debilitating crimes and had their families entirely disrupted in their lives. Uh, Susan Murphy Milano has joined me. She joins me each and every week at this time. And she's brought a guest with her, Monica Kassan, and she is the head of an amazing center uh, for missing persons to give them hope and give them a focus on what to do, how to keep working on finding the missing, as she advocates for their causes and gives total support for families. How wonderful. Monica, welcome, and Susan, Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for having me. Well, it's wonderful to have you. There are more than a few missing people in this country. Uh, Monica, tell us how severe this is and, and how you even got involved with this. Why do you care? <laughs> well, why do I care is a long, long story. But basically, uh, before I was uh, 25, I had um, three episodes where I was exposed to um, a missing person. And what I saw, um, which most people don't think about, I don't think, is, is the aftermath. After someone reports a person missing, you know, what they – what happens in their home life, in their private life, and and it definitely does destroy the family unit. Um, You know, it it sends these families in a tailspin of of distraught uh, behavior, and and they're just, you know, they have this hopelessness and this endless fear constantly. It's almost like a funeral procession every day. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we formed the Q Center for Missing Persons, which is the legal name is Community United Effort, it basically was was founded on that ideal as far as trying to fix that, trying to be behind the scenes and give that support to those families and guide them not only to remain hopeful, um, but to also guide them with ideas and to keep them positive while the investigators do their job. You know, there's still things they can do because they want to be involved in their case, but they don't know where to start, what to do, how to do it. And so we're just kind of like that that um, extended family member with the knowledge when we come into a family situation, and we just kind of guide them. And mm-hmm. in that, we also build advocacy, um, and and we try to make them stronger. We educate them about missing persons and all the factors and the laws and yeah. behaviors and what to expect and what what not to accept. And um, and through that process, you know, you you build them to be stronger because power you know, comes from knowledge, and uh, and and it's just like a, a whole unit thing that we put together, you know, with advocacy and support for the families, aiding them and guiding them in campaigns to, because awareness campaigns are vital in missing persons, not only to keep the families busy and, and know they're doing something for their loved one positive, but also to produce information from those awareness campaigns. So, you know, it all works hand in hand because new information is needed for investigators mm-hmm. to ultimately get to a place to search. And our organization is built off of promoting the search effort. You've got to look for somebody who's missing. But sometimes there just simply isn't a place to start or you run out of places to continue. Yeah. So that's the whole, you know, concept of, of the organization is, you know, come in there, be that extended family member, give them support, give them guidance you know, be there for them, walk them through their journey, because that's what it is, um, but also to promote the awareness to, you know, to help and aid investigators to get communities involved, mm-hmm. to garner them support, and and to continue that effort, basically, to, uh, to get to a place to search and hopefully find that person. More on the other side. Hold that thought. We'll be right back with Monica Kassan and Susan Murphy-Milano. No, this is not American Idol, so keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Lori Roth will be back in just mere moments. 
Heart-related health problems affect millions of people each year. Maybe you're one of the many who suffer from issues related to angina pain, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, unbalanced cholesterol, irregular heartbeat, or clogged arteries. There is a solution that doesn't involve expensive prescription drugs that only mask the problem and leave you with horrible side effects. If you are ready to live your life free of sickness, pain, and fear, live your life with increased vitality, energy, and youthfulness, and experience your body healing itself, then you're ready for heart and body extract from Healthy Hearts Club. Here is what one satisfied customer had to say about heart and body extract regarding his angina pain. I haven't had an angina pain uh, since I've been on it. The heart body extract is just so great. I thank God that I was led to this product that's doing so much for me and that can do so much for other people. Call to order your two-month supply of heart and body extract today. Call 1-866-295-5305 or go to HBX extract.com Are you looking to buy gold and silver but don't know who to trust? I'm Dr. Lori Roth, and let me tell you about GainesvilleCoins.com. Gainesville Coins has an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, and not only that, but they are a three-time recipient of the five-star award for best bullion dealer from the National Inflation Association. GainesvilleCoins.com has one of the largest selections of bullion for all your needs and can be purchased directly from their website. If you are ready to save money now for your future, visit GCI Gold. Com, where customer service is as important as the customer. That's GCIGold.com. Or you can reach a trader directly at 813-482-9300. That's 813-482-9300. Gainesville Coins is your triple threat against poverty. With excellent service, the best prices, and top flight reputation. So get prepared and plan ahead at GainesvilleCoins.com or call 813-482-9300. not gay, illegal, or handicapped, nor is she from Palestine, but she is special. She owns a gun, flies the U.S. flag, is on a first-name basis with Almighty God, and you don't have to ask the FBI to know where she stands. Her name is Dr. Lori Roth, and here she is again, right now. I'm talking to a crime blogger and best-selling author, and host in her own right, and she's a survivor, Susan Murphy Milano, and she's brought a guest, a very special guest, Monica Kassan, with us, and she is the head of the Q Center, and that's qcenter.org, C-U-E, center.org, and it's a nonprofit agency. She was de- describing uh, what they do, and it's a center for missing persons and their families, and it helps the person focus on finding these people, what they can do, keeping their causes alive and supporting families. Well, how wonderful is that? Uh, but you, I think, Lori, though, yeah. what she does, which is very different from everyone else's, is the campaigns that she does in the towns, in the areas. Like she'll target a certain area, let's say in New York, and she'll go to X amount, XYZ towns and, and do this campaign and that it's ready when she gets there, and they get information. They bring the awareness. They, we talked about it during break that maybe somebody that dated somebody or that went drove their bicycle or collected pop bottles remembers this person, remembers yeah. seeing them, remembers something happening, and they call in a tip. They might not think it's anything, but then because of what Monica and the Q Center does for the awareness campaign, that's what gets it jump started. Is that when you when you when you think of awareness in this day and age? where you have so much going on on the Internet and cops are so uh, limited with resources and money, what kind of awareness, if someone uh, is missing, their their 14-year-old daughter has disappeared, uh, what can you do? What do you suggest families even begin to do? Well, nowadays a lot of people reach out to all the social networks, which is, you know, is, is a pretty good uh Thing to have the um, families kind of for, as a friend will tell them immediately. Oh, you've got to get them on Facebook or some kind of social network and start getting that information out there. Um, and then normally uh, the families, most families that that have internet access, will research and try to find you know someone like me to get involved in their case. We get them registered and then you know then it's on from there. But um, we also experience still in today's age. There are a lot of families that do not have a computer in the home or not Internet savvy at all or maybe go to the library once a month type of thing and use Internet there. So, you know, you have to 
there, there's plenty of Internet access to, to promote missing people and get the word out quickly and reach millions of people. Um, so you have to educate those that don't have Internet access how to get to it, how to, you know, that, that's one obstacle that they need to, to make sure. So we have a lot of public events where we do big fingerprint and DNA um, awareness campaigns in communities um, mm -hmm. and, and reach thousands of people at one point. One, kit, one uh, festival in particular, we reach about 250,000 people in two days, you know, educating them on, on what to do if you have a missing person. We actually have a little handbook as well um, that we give out for free, um, you know, to communities abroad, just trying to educate people, you know, these are the first things you do in the onset of a missing person case. So there's, you know, it's public awareness, mm -hmm. it's education, but it's also Internet. Um, but if a child, you know, becomes missing and is feared to be run away or sure. or what have you, you know, you have to you have to start talking to the friend. You have to immediately, you know, get information. Um, and and normally, you know, most runaway kids um, usually contact home within the first 72 hours, especially if it's the first time they run away. Um, most of them are keeping contact with a good friend, and that friend will usually crack when the family is upset and the police get involved. Yeah. But there are a lot of times that those cases are just um, misdiagnosed and the child, even if the child may have run away, can still come into harm's way. So you have to do everything you can, no matter what circumstance the person becomes missing, um, to immediately take it seriously, get the information mm -hmm. out to, mm -hmm. you know, media, to social networks, so forth, so on. Um, you know, posters. I'm not a real big fan of putting posters out of runaways. I think that gives heads up to predators, but you could put them behind the scenes, like at convenience stores, along truck stops or whatever, and ask them to post it at their time clock or behind yeah. the cash register. Yeah. Um, I'm just not a real big fan about putting them out in public sure. a lot of times because um, it definitely gives the perpetrator, you know, heads up if the child was really just a runaway at that point. Yeah. Um, well, they, they'll never know, you know, so you kind of uh, steer away from that effort. Mm hmm. I, I was thinking, you know, when you think of someone uh, that has a missing person, whether it's a husband or a wife or a kid, uh, a grandma, someone you love that has turned up missing, um, the worst kind of torture I can possibly imagine is the lack of closure and wondering, wondering. There's wondering. never, there's never closure. There's an acceptance that something has happened. And even when they discover the person, like if you had the Harringtons on last week, yeah. there's never closure for them. Yeah. There's just an acceptance of the event that took place, horrifically as it was. They did find her body, but they're now seeking the person behind the crime. So, and you and you will hear her say. At, I heard her say at the conference last year. Monica Holt hosts this huge conference every year in Wilmington, and they said there is no closure. There's only acceptance. No, we and, actually and, don't use that word. Um, yeah. I think law enforcement and people like that in the community always say closure um, because maybe it's closure for them on their case. Uh, yeah, well, that, we that, call it a resolution. You know, that, a resolution that, that seems that more event. accurate Be because, Monica, I don't know how you could ever get over something like that, even when you found them with the good, the bad, and the ugly. Maybe, it was, maybe they were still alive or maybe they're dead. But at least... Like you say, they would have resolution. They would know what happened, and and right. they would have some idea. I mean, I can't. It's like a, a Chinese water torture for God knows how many years for these families. Yes. Well, we call um, once they hit past uh, twenty years of a missing person, we we actually have a name for them at our center. We call them the lifers because yeah. they've been given a life sentence and they've not committed a crime. And oh, so we actually Lord. say, oh, this is a lifer, you know, so everybody knows. Yeah. This case is, you know, 15, 20 years old, and, and it is so true. It's like a, a life sentence of torture, and they've not even committed a crime. And, uh, you know, it's, it's some of these families, um, a lot of the cases have endured many, many years because of lack of resources, you know, back in the day when they did become missing. But those cases are just as hopeful, um, and we stress that every day, as the newer cases because of the fact that there was so much not done Mm -hmm. that you can pick up a cold case and immediately have five or six goals to immediately execute because you can read through it and say, well, this wasn't done, that wasn't done, sure. you know, they're not in CODIS, they, you know, they never did this, they never did a billboard, they never, you know, and so you have a place to start. Yeah. Well, you know? and, and uh, you know, Susan, you, you bring on the most amazing people, uh, and, and uh, Monica, 
you're not just one of these uh, schmucks who's trying to further her career and makes all kinds of money. You formed yeah. this nonprofit in 1994, um, the Q Center for Missing Persons, because you actually did care, and you have helped over 9,000 families. Uh, oh, it's more than that. That's that. I think that's just. Oh, That's a toilet paper uh, number. I think it's a hundred thousand. I mean, I really do. Uh, no. Well, w- well. Oh yes. Whatever yeah, it do. is, it's a lot of families, tons of families, too too many to count. Yes. You've helped them through the most desperate, like you say, the lifers and other people, uh, where, where no one could possibly begin to figure out how, as you say, you've even changed the terms from closure to resolution and have, trying to have some more accurate things and help them figure out how to survive this hell. And you survive only on donations uh, right. that are, you know, funded by, by staff. You don't take a salary from the organization. So right. you are a lifer in the biggest heart sense for this thing, and you actually do care at every level you have several cases, you, all kinds of cases you're working on, and sometimes you use trained dogs. Uh, I was noticing on your website that, that smell out uh, and look for bodies and things like that. So you get right into the trenches. There's a case that I was curious about. Uh, tell the folks about Allison Donovan. What's that about? What happened there? Um, Alice Donovan was a female that went missing. Um, she was a mom. And uh, she had two daughters, and she was a female that went missing um, in South Carolina, basically running to the store, um, a national chain store, to pick up some items in the middle of a day um, to Kentucky escape inmates who had already committed uh, quite a few crimes prior to hitting their South Carolina and traveling from you know, Kentucky. And in the wake of their crime spree, mm-hmm. ended up in South Carolina. They abducted her in broad daylight. Um, and basically uh, murdered her um, and left her in a rural area of, of Long South Carolina. Um, seven years later, um, you know, and several months, I mean, like every single day on the ground, hundreds of searchers, massive searching going on in, in for her and the other victim, which was Samantha Burns out of West Virginia. And... Uh, both states were just in an uproar trying to find both of these ladies. First it became, you know, let's find her before Thanksgiving, then let's find her before Christmas, then, you know, if we could just find her by New Year's, then Mother's Day, and it just, you know, it just went on and on. And then we, we still continued even years later to do trainings in areas we thought she might could be. Um, and then I do a national road tour, and okay. it's strictly for cold cases. It's called On the Road to Remember, and it's a national tour. Every year we set out in August. Um, and we travel through, you know, different states each year. And we plan all year long in conjunction with families, law enforcement, community leaders, uh, organizations. Um, and we pick rally stops, which are different towns that we're going to go through in this, this uh, line that we pick for that particular year. Mm-hmm. States. And we feature missing persons. And we have, like, these big rally stops, um, you know, similar to, like, you know, when the president goes on his little campaign and stuff. You know, there's all these people and organizers that set up all these stops. And um, everybody's stop is different. Some might be small. Some might be very large. Some might be more like a parade versus other might be more like a a strict press conference. Um, It's whatever they want to do. We help mold their their little program. We spend an hour and a half at each stop, and we just stay on the road for two weeks straight. And um, the the whole intent and purpose of the tour is to bring back life to give the media a story, which is that here comes the road tour. We're giving out CDs, bumper stickers, T-shirts, everything with this, mm-hmm. this missing person's face on it, just in all in an effort to promote um, the, these cases. And we usually feature about 105 unsolved uh, missing person cases. Now, now, when this, now the, with this murder of Alice uh, Donovan, I mean, did uh, people know while she was missing that these two thugs had uh, – you know, they were arrested. Her. They were on death row. They were actually convicted without a body in okay. South Carolina for both murders of the girls, and they were put in death row. They just well, wouldn't we tell anyone. Okay. We had did a rally stop, and her daughters came to to get back a hold of me because we had lost touch for about a year or two. Yeah. And and that's what I was saying is that you know they came to this rally stop and said we want to start 
we want you to search for mom again. We want to start an effort back. And she said, we're going to do that November, you know, which was like a couple months away because it was the mm-hmm. first of September yeah. that we hit the, the grand finale stop that they came to. Um, and they wanted to put a public awareness event together. Well, in doing so, this inmate decided to write a letter to a local reporter and he get, and to, to give it to me at that event. And it was like a six-page letter. I read it. I wrote him one paragraph back. He sent me maps, and I went out there and located her remains. Well, why do you think he decided to tell then, after all this time of just lying about it? Um, I think that he couldn't remember, you know, who I was or how to get a hold of me. I think that he had lied so much. I mean, he even said in, in his letter that I'm the boy who cried wolf and nobody will listen to me anymore. And I think everybody had... Um, you know, moved on, police-wise. You know, everybody had moved on and said, yeah. you know what, we've got them. They're on death row. They're going to die for what they did. And, you know, if we never find the remains, um, you know, they're still punished. To where the families had sat back and said, but we still want our loved one found. Of course. And, um, and Alice's daughters had, had said that. You know, they had always kept the search on for her, and I'd always kept in touch with them. And then it was like the last couple of years, it was like year five or six and seven, that, you know, they had so much going on in their own personal lives and they just didn't know what to do anymore. And they reached out. And they were older because they were younger when she got missing. Yeah. And they were older to take a little bit more responsibility and in a better place in their life when they reached back out to me. And um, I said, absolutely, you know, we'll, we'll start all over again if we have to, whatever we got to do. And uh, it was just, it was a miracle. I, I definitely say it was a miracle from God that everything happened the way it did. Um because it was just that quick. We had the event in November. I wrote the letter, you know, the first week of December. He had actually mailed me. Hold on just a moment. Keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Lori Roth will be back in just mere moments. Forphysics.com. It is the ultimate exploring and shopping experience. Finally, a site where beauty and mystery meet perfectly. No more wondering about what to get for that person who has absolutely everything. At 4physics.com, you will find everything from light crystals, self-powered all-purpose radios, Aquatine sundials, plasma balls to lab equipment, educational resources, and much more. Prepare to spend a very, very long time at 4physics.com. At this amazing site, the mystery of science translates beautifully into all kinds of resources, gifts, and unique treasures that will really give you a whole lot of something to talk about. Get nerdy with it and show all your friends, family, and coworkers that science really is more fun. Display that light crystal or plasma ball while serenading your visitors on your self-powered radio. That's 4physics.com. Be there or be nowhere. Now batting for the Wounded Warrior Project, Johnny Damon. Last year, I joined the Wounded Warrior Project as their national spokesman. During that time, I have met some of the most amazing men and women who were injured in the war on terror in Iraq and Afghanistan. I have visited the hospitals and have witnessed the enduring spirits of those recovering. These brave warriors have suffered catastrophic injuries. Many are missing limbs or have been badly burned. Some will suffer through the effects of traumatic brain injuries for the rest of their lives. Regardless of your position on the war, one thing is for certain. These heroes and their loved ones deserve our help. No wounded veteran should bear the weight of his or her sacrifice alone. Through the Wounded Warrior Project, we can enrich these war veterans' lives with adaptive programs that will get them back into life's mainstream. Log on to WoundedWarriorProject.org to find out more about this fine organization that is helping these returning injured veterans and their families with their new lives. The greatest casualty is being forgotten. Let's make sure this doesn't happen to my brave friends. Not gay, illegal, or handicapped, nor is she from Palestine, but she is special. She owns a gun, flies the U.S. flag, is on a first-name basis with Almighty God, and you don't have to ask the FBI to know where she stands. Her name is Dr. Lori Roth, and here she is again, right now. I'm talking with Monica Kazan and Susan Murphy Milano. Uh, extraordinaire crusaders to help people in need who have been a victim of crime or, or uh, in Monica's case, uh, she helps missing persons and their families focus on what to do and, and helps advocate for their causes, which is huge. And you were just telling us about Alice Donovan, that her daughters 
uh, knew that their mom had been murdered. These thugs were on death row. And finally, you got the one guy to confess to you in, in writing where he had buried Alice. And you found it. I mean, many cases and families you work with, they they know that uh, already that their loved one is dead or been murdered or raped, or, you know. But some of them don't know, have a clue what ha- has happened to them, do they? No, there's a lot of them that, that uh, don't know, and, and some, you know, even I just had a, a mother of a missing daughter that I've been working on for many, many years. She just recently passed away, and, you know, and, and she went to her grave, you know, without without really knowing and, and her daughter not being found. So there are many situations where, you know, unfortunately, um, you're not as fortunate to get that kind of information or to get that kind of tip or lead. Although nowadays it seems that, you know, inmates are reaching out and are being truthful more often than years ago because they really just didn't have the capabilities of finding out who to reach out to and what have you. And, again, I think the Internet um, and national news has helped that a lot because... Well, look at Brittany Mae Smith two weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and Mm -hmm. and we were all over it. The mother was murdered in her home in Virginia. The guy she had met on the Internet, she had taken him, and they were living in a tent in a... In, in an area, and, you know, we kept out there with the information and said she's she's either in a very small hotel, she's in the woods somewhere. Somebody at Walmart allegedly spotted her, this 12-year-old girl, and 10 days after she went missing, this always doesn't happen, she was found alive and safe. Um, right. And and you've got these, well, and a lot of these cases that Monica deals with, too, they're intimate partner homicides. Maybe yeah. somebody doesn't remember who they date, dated or who they went with. And there's many cases, actually, We've had him on, Lori, the Oklahoma cases. Sheila DeVinney, who was murdered in 2004, the mother was on just for the death certificate change of the medical examiner's office. It was an intimate partner homicide. I I had stopped her and said, wait a minute. No, I'm going to ask you questions. Forget about that. This is murder. Here, we're going to do this. And and now those three cases are being worked on by a special prosecutor. Now they're moving forward because they weren't thinking of that connection, and that's what Monica does. She connects facts mm-hmm. and things that maybe somebody missed. She goes in, and it's not difficult. When you have a, set, a fresh set of eyes, you have to remember, too, that yeah. when these families go to, to the police station and they fill out the reports, everybody's kind of traumatized, so they forget you, things. Sure, of course. And, Monica, and you, you were just... You have t- to build t- trust in those communities yes. that you go to as well to get people to trust you that... Because, you know, a lot of times people do not want to get involved or think they want to get involved and call the police and and ha- be, their name be thrown out, you know, mm-hmm. to the perpetrator or the public or what have you. So th- there's still a lack of trust there. Um, and, you know, they feel like if they can reach out to me that I'm going to – I'm really going to look into it. You know, I'm really going to follow it through and I'm really going to try to protect them because I get many, many calls where people – say, now I can remain anonymous, right? I mean, I'll tell you who I am, but I don't want this to happen. I have children or what have you. And, mm-hmm. and I assure them, and I take that very seriously as well. Well, you were just sharing some stuff on the break that, you know, Susan, you've shared stuff like this in various cases and with all the Oklahoma uh, area nightmare cases down there. I mean, there's there's sometimes that that, that cops or sheriffs, uh, you know, ha, ha, are reading the the phone records wrong or the cell phone records. You you were just talking about one where he was looking at the wrong time on. I mean, the pinging on the. I mean, just stuff like that can blow a whole case, can it? Or, or 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 a blog I just did the case two and a half years later. I, I'm not going to say which one it is, but they they've come back. The PDs come back and and said, you know. What can we do? You know, do you have X, Y, Z? And it turned out that we had it, but, you know, because of something that we had done, and 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 somebody had gone out and taken pictures of a crime scene that I thought perhaps because the tires were set wrong, something stupid in a photo, where I said, yeah, you know, this doesn't happen in a desolate area. Somebody's been back out there. Maybe there. To me, that looks like a sign of a cross with tires, with just rubber tires. Right. Those little things. That's something that, you know, Monica picks up probably easier than I do. Mm-hmm. And me, it's, it's luck sometimes. But it, it's, just, it's just let's look outside the box. Let's mm-hmm. not think the yeah. way that everybody else sure. does because we treat every case like, like our own DNA. We don't ever say, well, this is similar to this because the perpetrators, the offenders, the criminals are not similar. But they're similar in their patterns of what and how they're going to kill and maybe where somebody is or isn't. 
Well, for example, we had a case of a missing child a couple of years ago, um, and uh, when the car was returned after the forensic, you know, um, abduction in the, in the forensic ordeal, they returned the car to the family. And I just happened to be there that day, and I had really bonded with the family. It was an African-American family. And we were standing in the driveway, and I was looking at the car, and I said, when did you wreck the car? And she said, I didn't. I said, well, there's a big dent right there and everything. She goes, And she was mad. She thought the police had hurt her car. And I said, and I looked down, I said, this looks fresh. You might need to call them and ask what they did, you know, if, in fact, they did it or, you know, if they noticed this. Mm-hmm. And and long story short of that effort, she called in an effort to really bless them out, like they messed her car up, but they had missed it. They came back two hours later, got the car, brought it in, was able to get the paint chip and identify that this perpetrator who abducted the child and did murder him um, had actually was in a wreck that day with another fender bender with a man, which the man let him go because he was like, oh, don't worry about it, you know, which it was the man's fault, so obviously he let him go. Well, that man was able to come forward from newscast saying anybody that drives a such and such vehicle that was in a wreck in this, you know, vicinity, um, please call the police. And he did, in fact, call the police. They were able to establish that there was a space in the back of the vehicle, which we knew that that's what he had put the child in, um, deceased, and, and then also gave a whole new area of where he was going. And then it was a Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know, lady that I was in an all, you know, African-American community, and she decides to tell me, oh, yeah, he came through here that day. And oh then I'm like, goodness. really, where'd he go? Oh, right across the street. Well, lo and behold, we were on our way across the street, and I'm glad it happened the way it did because I was going to go search over there real quick. But I did have a lot of the family with us because we were taking lunch, and so it was God intervening and turned us around. We get a phone call from the solicitor's office saying, hey, he's ready to make a deal and tell us where the body is. So, of course, we turn around and go back. But we were one red light from finding this child already, and then we went and, you know, back to the solicitors, made a deal, and they took us right back out there. And the father looked at me and said, we should have never took that deal. We should have went with this, you know, what the woman told us. And, and he kind of kicked himself, but, you know, it is what it is, but I'm just saying that from that little thing that I noticed on the car and brought it to the mother's attention, yeah. just broke the whole case wide open and gave us a whole new enlightenment on where he was going and what was going on. And from that, he calls the police to confess because he knows he's going to get caught. You know, he knows he's going to, they're going to find the kid sooner or later. Yeah. Oh, my you goodness. Know? So you just, you never know. You never know what, what could be important and what isn't. No, and you use a uh, dog or, or dogs that are trained uh, to to how how do they get? To, I mean, obviously they they train them to smell and and find dead bodies, but how accurate are dogs doing this kind of work? Well, first off, we have spent the past sixteen years um, networking to build a solid uh, response network across the nation with dog teams and resources and divers and you name it, anybody who has the resources that are professional searchers from their community. So, in other words, I myself can go to, say, the state of Missouri, and all I have to do is call all our Missouri teams and a few other teams in neighboring states, and I've got one of the largest cold case searches going on or or even a fresh search going on Mm -hmm. and aiding law enforcement with those free resources and they're top of the line. So we've spent a lot of years building this network, and we have thousands of people in this database that we can call on and that we do call on on a regular basis. Um, All of the dogs that that work for body recovery, which are um, canine cadaver dogs, um, are trained in their respective fields within their states and also on a national level and have standards that even exceed the national level. And they, they are constantly in training you know, even when they're mm-hmm. certified, they, they constantly, if you're not on a search, you're supposed to be, you know, doing training. And so these dogs stay at their game 24-7. Now, how close do they have to be to a body to pick up the smell, or can they smell quite a far off? Well, it depends on what they're trained in, but majority of the um, dogs that, that uh, you know, air scent and work cadaver, um, you know, they definitely go off of scent, and their scent is magnified you know, way past what we smell. Um, For instance, a trainer one time told me when when I first started, he's like, you know, when you walk in a house and you're cooking chicken, you smell chicken cooking, right? And it smells good. He said, but a dog smells every rawness of the meat, every chemical that's in the meat, 
every ingredient that's in the, the what you rolled the chicken in, the grease burning, and multiple, you know, smells at a magnifying um, rate that we would never smell. And so, you know, and the old saying is, you know, my dog always knows when my husband's coming home, he could be a mile away. You know, it's it's you know, that scent, they yeah. they know. And um, so, yeah, they don't have to be right over the body, but everything is um, in their training. Every And then, of course, the weather always plays factor. And you just, as a canine handler, a person who handles a dog, you have to understand your wind factors, your temperature, you know, what your dog's body language is, even if they haven't alerted yet, if they're coming into scent. And these are all things you learn you know, while you train with your partner constantly, you learn your dog. You learn that look. You learn that body language of your dog prior before your dog even indicates there's something, you know, buried here or there's this is human remains or yeah. we're getting ready to come up on human remains. We'll so be back in just a moment. Be right on it. Hold that. Well, this is not American Idol, so keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Laurie Roth will be back in just mere moments. But don't know who to trust? I'm Dr. Lori Roth, and let me tell you about GainesvilleCoins.com. Gainesville Coins has an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, and not only that, but they are a three-time recipient of the five-star award for best bullion dealer from the National Inflation Association. GainesvilleCoins.com has one of the largest selections of bullion for all your needs and can be purchased directly from their website. If you are ready to save money now for your future, visit GCIGold.com, where customer service is as important as the customer. That's GCIGold.com. Or you can reach a trader directly at 813-482-9300. That's 813-482-9300. Gainesville Coins is your triple threat against poverty. With excellent service, the best prices, and top flight reputation. So get prepared and plan ahead at GainesvilleCoins.com or call 813-482-9300. Her name is Dr. Lori Rock. Here she is again, right now. I'm talking with Monica Kaysen, and she is the head of, well, really, a, a, a very important uh, conference that's coming up in March. And you have a website that's a resource for people that have missing persons in their life. Would you mind giving your website and telling folks quickly about the conference, Monica? Absolutely. Our website is www.nc missing persons that's plural and then dot org so it's nc missing persons dot org and right on the front page when you go there under news you can click on the conference uh section and it'll give you all the updated information we're constantly updating it we're just um by the end of the year we will uh have everything finalized as, as our speakers but we have some wonderful speakers every year that we're so blessed with as well as instructors and it's all certified training, um, and uh, we try to uh, touch on every topic that we can think of from, you know, how to deal with a runaway, how children end up in prostitution, all the way to, um, you know, homicide, uh, you know, different technology. We try to, we try to have a full faucet every year of, of different sectors of what people go through with a missing person, but we always mm-hmm. try with hope to introduce new technology and advanced information to um, educate families and those that who attend. And it's a very mixed crowd. The crowd hold, is- on, hold on, and we'll dive in some more on the other side. No, this is not American Idol. So keep your shirt on and keep your powder dry. Dr. Lori Roth will be back in just mere moments. Not gay, illegal, or handicapped, nor is she from Palestine, but she is special. She owns a gun, flies the U.S. flag, is on a first-name basis with Almighty God, and you don't have to ask the FBI to know where she stands. Her name is Dr. Lori Roth, and here she is again, right now. Monica, let's give out the website and what people can find there. Let's say that they've been struggling along waiting for cops and, and, you know, years and years of waiting and nothing's happening. Uh, Can you give out your website and what people can find there, please? Yes, it's www.ncmissingpersons, 
org. And you can go there, and there's there's plenty of information. Um, if you are uh, need to, uh, if you have not filed your case with our center, we do have to have the cases filed with us before we can even work on them. So there is a tab that it's called File a Report, and you can go on there, and that tells you all the information plus an online entry where you can submit your information. But there's also other required information that we need to take on the case. And then what we do is. Uh, review it and immediately make contact with the family and investigators and try to set some goals for the case. Um, once information is obtained and what we need, um, we can sit back and, and look over it. We have a, 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 a group that sits down, too, on some of the cold cases, um, and, you know, we construct a goal plan and we try to execute that, and normally um, I'll assign it to caseworkers just depending on, you know, how involved they're going to be. Some of them need search efforts right away. Some of them need awareness campaigns right away to, in, in order to gain information. And then others, mm -hmm. there was just simply some things that were missed that, you know, you need to start right at square one and, and make sure those cases get up to date. So there's always something you can do. I, I do want to say that, you know, this time of year, families struggle even more than sure. any other time of year mm -hmm. um, because it is the holidays. This is a, a known holiday to get together with family and loved ones, and that person is always missed, and there's always a – a sadness and and uh, and a desperation that comes like God. Well, here we go into another year, you know, irregardless of when that person got missing. So, um, you know, there is hope. There's always somewhere you can go with your case. There's always positive efforts that you can make to keep your case alive, and that's the most important thing. People are not going to reach out, and information is not going to come forward if the case is thrown on a back shelf and no one ever hears about it. Um, so we have to, you know, we have to encourage families to not give up and to keep doing things, even if it's just an annual event. You've got to honor your missing loved one. You've got to give an opportunity for someone to come forth and bring you information, and they're not going to do it unless you put yourself out there in some kind of public forum. So, you know, get, on the, get your case on the Internet, you know, work on awareness campaigns. We'll be happy to guide them with ideas and, and, and efforts, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in their case, and, and make sure your cases are up to date. Um, you know, there's so many things that weren't done early in the years when cases got um, people be, became reported missing. So, you know, that's another thing. Look at all the information that's out there on our website under file a report, and it tells you things you need to know and places your case needs to be at, and and you need to register with all those different um, you know entities and organizations and and programs that are out there because there's so much out there now. If they want to come to your conference, how do they do that? Can they find out at ncmissingpersons.org about that? Absolutely. They can go to our website, and um, like I said, under the news section, there's uh, the conference for, you know, Missing Person Conference. You click on that. It has all the updated information. It's being updated every week. Um, it should be finalized by the end of this month. Right on. And of all the speakers and things, and you can register right online to hold your spot. Um, the deadline, you know, to uh, attend is March 10th. So, you know, we encourage, you know, to share that information and for families to come. You'll be so empowered and meet so many different uh, people that work you, behind the scenes. Well, you rock, and thank you so much for your courageous and amazing work, Monica. And thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. God bless Merry you. Merry Christmas. You Back know by now that God, country, and our moral heritage are not for sale. And our great country needs your fervent prayers. Talk to your friends. Talk to your enemies. Spread the word about The Roth Show. Check out Lori's articles, archives, and great sponsors. Go to therothshow.com. Remember to pray for our country, and remember to be back next time, right here on The Roth Show with Dr. Lori Roth. Hi, folks. This is Lori Roth for Taxmasters. Do you have the weight of the world on your shoulders because you have IRS problems? I can think of very few things that are as frightening as having to deal with the IRS. Fortunately for you, there is Taxmasters. If you owe back taxes, are being audited, have unfiled returns, or have had an IRS agent come to your home or place of business, call Taxmasters right now because they can solve your IRS problems. Write this number down. one 877 869 
4829 or simply 1-877-869-4TAX. That's a number 4 and the word TAX, T-A-X. You do not want to represent yourself with the IRS. The professionals at Tax Masters have helped literally thousands of people just like you. The IRS has stepped up their efforts. Now more than ever, you need Tax Masters, so call right now. 1-877-869-4829 or simply 1-877-869-4TAX. That's 4TAX. Tax Masters. 